Well, happy Monday to you all. I hope you're doing well. Well, it's been a while since you've seen me. We've had um, a number of things going on, and uh, you see a less less hairy me than you've seen in quite a while, but it's good to be back together with you. We are now in the Gospel of Mark, and so this is our second week of reading of the Gospel of Mark. And I have just one question for you. What kind of soil are you? Hi, I'm Pastor Mark. With Heights Christian Church, we are going through the Bible in five years. In fact, we're on year five. And so if you have been with us, congratulations. If you're just joining us, you can start now. And in five years, you'll have gone through the complete Bible, uh, have read it together, myself or Pastor Jeremy or Pastor John. We're reading the Bible together. We're doing it as a community of believers at Heights Christian Church because we desire to know the scriptures. And the scriptures are um, amazing to teach us straight from the Holy Spirit's inspiration for God's word. So let's dive into Mark chapter four, the first 20 verses. And here we go. Let me change the screen. There you go, so you can see it better. Verse four, I mean chapter four. And began and, and again he began to teach by the sea. And a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground, and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside all things come in parables, so that seeing they may, be, they may see and not perceive, and hearing that they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accepted and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Okay, so that's my question for you today. Um, what kind of soil are you? Now, there's been times I've heard sermons say, what kind of seed are you? Well, that's not true. The seed, Jesus clearly tells the disciples, is the word of God that come. And how we receive the Word of God determines what kind of soil we are. Now, most of us would, would like to think that we are the good soil, that receive the Word of God or the seed, 
and it grows, sprouts up, and produces a crop. And there is a bounty of bearing fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. However, we, don't, we, can't, we, don't, we need to make sure that we aren't assuming wrong because we need to look at that. There have been times in my life when I have been, well, I'm not so sure on the path, that kind of soil, but stony ground, sometimes, because they have no root. And because there, there was a time when I didn't read the Word of God, didn't accept it. I just sort of went through the motions. And then there are times when we've I've had perse um, persecution, or when I had uh, the deceitfulness of riches in my life that have caused me to to stumble that maybe my um, my fruit didn't come out but in the last 20 years or so I feel like I've done my part in making my me the soil in my heart to receive the Word of God and to accept it and to believe and to operate my life based on God's Word let me tell you something not all the specifics can be your life can be altered by God's word but the basics of God's word must influence how you live on a daily basis not everything will it should I take the stairs the elevator hmm maybe that is an answer in the word of God however there are other major ones you know should I should I cheat on my wife should I get drunk should I you know fill in the blank there and the Bible is very clear in a lot of these areas. No, I shouldn't cheat on my wife. I should treat her with honor and respect. And remember, it's a covenant that my wife and I made in, in, to be married till death do us part. That's clearly in the Bible. And so, you know, remember the wife of your youth. If you look in the Proverbs or if you look in the Psalms and those things, the Bible speaks to us on daily there are some things that maybe we don't have to, to use the Word of God to make us in our decisions. However, for the big things in life, absolutely the God speaks clearly through His Word into our life, and we need to act on it. We want to be the good soil. So, this is for you. This isn't for you to judge anybody else. This is for you. What kind of soil are you? And if you're not the right kind of soil, get to be the right kind of soil. You know, repentance, ask for forgiveness, and move forward. Well, those are my encouraging words for you today. I hope you have a blessed day. And um, I think I forgot to tell you to um, subscribe to our channel. Please do. That would be great. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow.